Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with astrophysicist Hugh Ross. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. You know, you are well known for being in kind of any environment, but especially as you travel for ministry, being on planes and having conversations with strangers and like having deep conversations. Um, so I want to kind of dive into some of the conversations you have had. Um, so say you're sitting on a plane and you're talking with the science-minded skeptic. I'm sure you've had... I've had uh, a few of those Yeah, a few of those situations. <laughs> um, so you're discussing, discussing your mutual uh, professions and questions arise about how we got here. Um, what would you expect to see from a biblical account of human origins if that is the true account? Like what, if you're, and you're talking with a, a science-minded skeptic, they're going to want to know that. Yeah, well, you're going to see, you actually would predict from a biblical perspective that mm -hmm. you would see uh, a chain of bipedal primate species of Procedas, mm -hmm. where each successive one's a little more capable of hunting large body bird and mammal species. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't expect to see a lot of them, so you expect to see a fairly scant fossil record of those species, but you need them there in order to train uh, the large body bird and mammals. Mm -hmm. When you see tall bipedal mammals with weapons in their hands, run away. Because mm -hmm. it tells us in the Bible that God designed the birds and mammals to come to us, to serve and please us, and relate to us. Mm -hmm. But God knew ahead of time that humans would fall into sin. And when they fall into sin, they would abuse the very animals mm -hmm. that God had actually specially created to help us launch civilization. And the proof for that is those continents that didn't have bipedal primate before humans showed up, uh, there was a huge extinction of bird and mammal species when mm -hmm. humans entered. Australia, the extinction rate was above 94%. Wow. Whereas in Africa, it was only 4.5%. So killing for sport. They weren't killing okay. for sport, they were killing for food. Mm -hmm. But the large body bird and mammal species mm -hmm. are the easiest ones mm -hmm. uh, to kill. And so, and that was what Neanderthals fed on mm -hmm. predominantly and other bipedal primates, but they weren't as skilled at hunting as we humans. Mm -hmm. And so many of them survived. And they quickly figured out when you see these tall bipedals, run away because mm -hmm. they mean us harm. Uh, whereas in Australia, uh, these uh, bird and mammal species mm -hmm. were naturally drawn to humans mm -hmm. that quickly wiped them out. Similar things happen in North and South America. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why you don't get an aggressive launch of civilization in the early history of humans in Australia, North America, and South America. They lack the bipedal primates that were needed to ensure that the animals, most essential for uh, civilization, actually survived. So when we're talking about a biblical account for human origins, you're saying that what we would expect to see in the fossil record is the existence of bipedal primates to kind of train animals in a sense to be aware of bipedal creatures. Well, what's interesting about the fossil mm -hmm. record, it doesn't fit a naturalistic record because mm -hmm. a naturalistic uh, perspective, you'd expect that the bipedalism mm -hmm. would gradually improve mm -hmm. as you go from one species to the next to the right. next. Likewise, uh, the size and structure of the brain would mm -hmm. become more and more human-like. Mm -hmm. That's not what we see. What you see in the uh, fossil record of the hominids mm -hmm. is that bipedal capability does this. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the brain. In fact, the most recent bipedal primate uh, was uh, Homo florensis, and that creature had a brain the size of a chimpanzee, only a quarter the size of a human brain, mm -hmm. and certainly lacked the brain structure uh, for advanced function. So there again, the fossil record is the opposite Mm -hmm. of what you expect from a naturalistic perspective. Mm -hmm. But the one thing you would anticipate from a biblical perspective, mm -hmm. you'd see an improvement in the capability of these creatures being able to hunt large body bird and mammal species. Mm -hmm. That we do see. So we do see this gradual development of these skills, and that is what is expected from a biblical account from a naturalistic account, what we would expect to see is 
a step by step, a step by progress step. towards mm -hmm. uh, the human brain right. and towards human bipedal capability, mm -hmm. the human digestive system, mm -hmm. and that's not what we see in the fossil record. It's chaotic. So it uh, goes so up and down. It goes towards human mm -hmm. beings and then away from human mm -hmm. beings. So it's doing that all the way through. Mm -hmm. And a common statement you see in the scientific literature, every time we make uh, a fossil discovery mm -hmm. of a new bipedal primate species, it throws the naturalistic model into greater chaos, not less. Mm -hmm. So, and that's been going on for the past 100 years. The other thing we notice too, that's a problem for the naturalistic mm -hmm. model, is that we see so few fossil finds for the non-human bipedal primates that it tells us their population levels were very low. Mm -hmm. If they're pop and we're talking like say for Neanderthals, tops 15,000 individuals at any given time, mm -hmm. spread over an enormous habitat size, which explains why you look at the genetics, we see that they're ingrown. Uh, so you don't see the genetic diversity, and uh, with a population that low, you're not going to see uh, significant evolutionary change. And it's also seen when you look at the oldest Neanderthals and compare with the most recent fossil finds, you can't see a significant difference. Mm -hmm. The populations simply weren't high enough uh, to drive any significant evolution. I mean, even for our own human species, mm -hmm. with the billions of us, that's still uh, not high enough to drive significant uh, evolutionary change in our morphology. So then from a Christian or a biblical perspective, explain to me how a gradual change is different from evolution, because that sounds like evolution. Well, evolution mm -hmm. uh, naturalistically would predict that you know, as you get natural selection, mm -hmm. mutations, gene exchange, yeah epigenetics, this will cause new species to develop mm -hmm. and the proliferation of new species. If you wait long enough, will make new genera. New genera will make new uh, uh, families and new orders, mm -hmm. uh, new classes, and last of all, new phyla. Mm -hmm. But what you actually see in the fossil record, and I'm talking like the past 600 million years, is the opposite. The phyla show up first. They show up suddenly as soon as conditions permit their existence. Mm -hmm. They show up simultaneously. And uh, last of all, you get the proliferation of the species. What you see in the fossil record is the exact opposite of what you'd expect uh, from a naturalistic perspective, mm -hmm. but from a biblical perspective, where God is aggressively packing the earth with as much life as possible, as diverse as possible, in order to get all the bio deposits in the crust of the earth so the humans at just the right time can use those deposits to launch civilization. That's what the fossil record supports. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. This is a very deep topic and I know that we yeah, can Yeah, we've only... written several books on it. Right, so. I know we can barely kind of scratch the surface, but I think it's, it's helpful to kind of understand a basic conversation that someone can have. I know it's, it's technical, but some basic points on what we would expect to see from a biblical account versus a strictly naturalistic account for human origins. So I'm going to recommend Who is Adam mm -hmm. and Origins of Life. Okay, yeah? good. Um, so if you would like more on this topic, be sure to check out Dr. Ross's book, which he wrote with Fuzzle Rana. Look for Who is Adam and also Origins of Life.